She was born on the 5th of July, 1554, in Vienna, Austria. She died on the 22nd of January, 1592, aged 37, in Vienna, Austria. Her husband was Charles IX of France. They had one child together, Elizabeth of Valois. Her father was Maximilian II, Holy Roman Emperor. Her mother, Maria of Spain. Elizabeth was the fifth child and second daughter of her parents' 16 children, of whom eight survived infancy. During her childhood, she lived with her older sister, Anna, and younger brother, Matthias. They enjoyed a privileged and secluded childhood and were raised in the Roman Catholic religion. Her father, Maximilian, visited her often and Elizabeth seems to have been his favourite child. She resembled him not only in appearance, but also in character. Elizabeth was just as intelligent and charming as her father. With her flawless white skin, long blonde hair and perfect physique, she was considered one of the great beauties of the era. She was also regarded as demure, pious and warm-hearted, but naive and intensely innocent because of her sheltered upbringing. Still, she was intellectually talented. Very early around 1559, a match between Elizabeth and the Duke of Orleans, the future King Charles IX of France, was suggested. Only in 1569, after the failure of marriage plans with Frederick II of Denmark and Sebastian of Portugal, the French offer was seriously considered. Catherine de' Medici, mother of Charles IX and the power behind the throne, initially preferred Elizabeth's elder sister, Anna, but the latter was already chosen as the new wife of her uncle, King Philip II of Spain. Catherine finally agreed to the marriage with the younger Elizabeth, as France absolutely needed a Catholic marriage. Elizabeth was first married by proxy on the 22nd of October 1590. After a long celebration on the 4th of November, she left Austria accompanied by high-ranking German dignitaries. Because of bad weather upon arrival in France, where constant rain had made travelling on roads impossible, the decision was taken to have the official wedding celebration in Champagne. King Charles IX of France and Archduchess Elizabeth of Austria were formally married on the 26th of November, 1570. The occasion was celebrated with immense pomp and extravagance. Despite the dire state of French finances, the new queen's wedding dress was of cloth of silver, sprinkled with pearls and diamonds, and her tiara was studded with pearls, emeralds, diamonds, sapphires, and rubies. Because of the difficult journey and the cold weather at the beginning of 1571, Elizabeth fell ill. Since the wedding took place far away from Paris, it was only in the spring that the German-French alliance was celebrated once again with magnificent feasts in the capital. On the 25th of March, 1571, Elizabeth was consecrated as Queen of France. The new queen officially entered Paris four days later on the 29th of March. Then she disappeared from public life. Elizabeth was so delighted about her husband that she, to general amusement, did not hesitate to kiss him in front of others. 
However, Charles IX already had a long-term mistress, Marie Touchier, who famously quoted, The German girl does not scare me. After a brief infatuation with his teenage bride, Charles soon returned to his mistress. However, the royal couple had a warm and supportive relationship. Charles realised that the liberal ways of the French court might shock Elizabeth and, along with his mother, made an effort to shield her from its excess. In addition, Catherine de' Medici made sure that her new daughter-in-law was kept out of the affairs of state. Elizabeth spoke German, Spanish, Latin and Italian with fluency, but she learned French with difficulty. Also, she felt lonely in the lively and dissolute French court. She was shocked with the licentious ways of the court, dedicated her time to embroidery work, reading and especially the practice of charitable and pious works. She continued to hear mass twice a day and was appalled at how little respect was shown for religion by the supposedly Catholic courtiers. Despite her strong opposition to Protestantism in France, she was horrified when she received news of the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre on the 24th of August. 1572 and which continued for several days afterwards when thousands of French Protestants were slaughtered in Paris. Shocked upon learning from someone in her entourage about the massacre, she asked if her husband knew. She was told not only that he knew about it, but was its initiator. She exclaimed, oh my god, what is this? Who are these counsellors who gave him such advice? My God, I ask you to forgive him. Then she asked for her book of hours and began to pray. During those days, Elizabeth was given petitions to speak for the innocent and she managed to assure a promise to spare the lives of the foreign, especially numerous German Protestants. Quite advanced in pregnancy at the time, she was seven months pregnant. She did not publicly rejoice at so many deaths like other prominent Catholics did. Two months later, on the 27th of October, 1572, she gave birth to her first and only child, a daughter. The child was named Marie Elizabeth after her grandmother, Empress Maria, and Queen Elizabeth I of England, who were her godmothers. By the time of her birth, the health of Charles was deteriorating rapidly, and after long suffering, in which Elizabeth rendered him silent support and prayed for his recovery, Charles died on the 30th of May, 1574. Elizabeth wept tears so tender and so secret, according to a courtier, at his bedside. After having completed the 40-day mourning period, Elizabeth now called the White Queen, as by custom, white clothing was worn by the widow of the deceased King of France after the initial mourning period, was compelled by her father to return to Vienna. Shortly before Emperor Maximilian II made the proposition of a new marriage for her, this time with her deceased husband's brother and successor, King Henry III of France. However, she as well as Henry firmly refused. On the 28th of August 1575, Elizabeth visited her almost three-year-old daughter for the last time and on the 5th of December she left Paris. Back in Vienna, Elizabeth lived at first in the residence of her childhood, Stahlberg. On the 12th of October 1576, her beloved father, Maximilian II, died 
Her last great tragedy came on the 2nd of April 1578 when her five and a half year old daughter, Marie Elizabeth, died. When a new proposal of marriage was made to her, this time from her brother-in-law, King Philip II of Spain, after the death of his widow and Elizabeth's sister, Anna, in 1580, she refused her uncle. She replied to the offer with the famous phrase, the queens of France do not remarry, once said by Queen Blanche of Navarre, widow of King Philip VI in 1350. In early 1580, Elizabeth bought some land near Stalberg and founded a convent known as the Queen's Monastery. She henceforth devoted her life to following the example of her convent's holy patron in the exercise of piety, relief of the poor and health care. Even impoverished daughters of the nobility found her support. She also financed the restoration of All Saints Chapel in Prague, which had been destroyed in a fire in 1541. Elizabeth died on the 22nd of January, 1592, a victim of pleurisy and was buried under a simple marble slab in the church of her convent. In her will, Elizabeth donated money not only to the poor and sick, but also included funds for prayers for her late husband in the convent's church. And this concludes the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please click the like button, give it a thumbs up, and please subscribe for future videos. Thank you.